React Native Developers. On this channel, we like to showcase cool and fun gestures and animations. Sometimes we like to be a little bit on the cutting edge. And sometimes we forget some practical implementation details in order to implement these demos and examples in real world apps. After the wallet animation video, you've been several asking me if such an example can be done with the flat list. And it gave the idea of an animation technique I am quite excited about. Let's have a look. Guys, I hope you are well. William here recording from beautiful Zurich, Switzerland. You've been several asking me about building the wallet animation using a flat list. And there is a previous video that we've done that gave me the idea that there might be a cool technique we can use in order to do this. And that's the Instagram pinch to zoom feature. At some point in order to build the example, we had to look at the JavaScript implementation of the sticky indices in the scroll view. And we saw that the way these stick indices are implemented in React Native is really by um, canceling the Y, for instance, in the case of a vertical scroll view, by canceling every Y translation of the content with an opposite Y translation. And so it made me realize that we could have like frame by frame control of the um, translation of the content within the scroll view, which means that we can potentially use a scroll view and a flat list and have um, full control over all the components that are children to the square view move around uh, the scene. And in the Instagram video, for this particular uh, animation, we had to use the vanilla animated API from React Native because here using Reanimated on Android, we couldn't get frame by frame a full control over the way the element moves. I'm super excited about this technique because the very first times um, we made videos on this channel, I was basically, and that's a technique I've seen from uh, Brent Vatney, is that we would overlay a transparent scroll view on top of some content. I don't know if you guys are longtime subscribers of the channel, you've, uh, you know what I'm talking about. So we would have the Y value uh, from the scroll view and you, we could use it to animate the elements to do any sorts of cool things. And this was kind of fun because we didn't, uh, we didn't have to do any uh, complex boilerplate. So for instance, in the uh, wallet animation, we had to do some decays and so on, but it had, <laughs> it had a huge drawback, which is uh, that you couldn't touch the elements because you, uh, we had uh, a scroll view basically, which was hidden and overlaid on top of the whole content. And so here, we might be able to get the best of both worlds. So we leverage the scroll view, we leverage the flat list in order to get the Y value that will drive all our, our animations. And so this means, you know, it simplifies the implementation dramatically. Plus in the case of the flat list, it's a virtual list. So you can have like infinite number of uh, elements potentially. And we still have, you know, we don't play any crazy tricks where we have like some content overlay on top of each other. All the elements within the scroll view or the flat list are regular elements, which can be touchable and so on. So here I have a nice uh, flight list to display the elements. And the first thing we're going to do is to wrap it into an animation component. So animated flat list. So we're going to do animated and here it's not reanimated. We always use reanimated here. We use vanilla react native, create animated component, flat list. And we're going to create a Y animation value, which will be driving the whole animation. So we're going to use new animated dot value. Here I do something that you might find a little bit silly. So to distinguish between vanilla animated and reanimated, if it's vanilla animated, I use animated dot. If it's reanimated, I don't use uh, animated dot prefix. 
and uh, let's create an event handler on the flat list. So we're going to have on scroll, which it is an animated dot event. So it's native event. And I think it's called content offset Y. And we use, we need to do something we haven't done in edges. It's a use native driver, true. Oh my, oh my, <laughs> use native driver, true. We haven't done this in, in quite some time. Um, so let's assign on scroll to the flat list. Bring, brings back some memory. Um, so here on scroll and we need, I think it's a scroll event throttle to be at 16 milliseconds. And um, maybe we can try quickly if uh, this works, if the value is registered by, so passing it here to the wallet card. So now we have a new property, which is an animated node. No, it's not an animated node. So I, I see already it imported the wrong animated. Yes, code is so used to it. Okay, it's animated interpolated value. I mean, here it's value actually, animated, reanimated, animated value, sorry. And uh, let's just apply. So when we do usually the pan gesture handler, if the content goes up, we have a negative translation, right, on the Y axis. Here, the content of set value is positive if the content goes up. So if we want to cancel out the translation because of the content, we just need to apply Y to translate Y because we need to. So content goes up, the translation is negative, but the content offset is positive. So we want a negative translation. We want a positive translation. We simply apply Y to the transform. So I'm going to do a transform. It's an array. Translate Y. Up. So if this works as expected, this needs to be an animated view. So you see here, it's not moving. So for every frame, we perfectly canceled out uh, the translation of the square view. So now we are back to the state we were in the example where we use the pan gesture handler because now it's something we can work with. We can add our own translations and do our own interpolations. And um, so, yeah, we are where we were with the uh, pan gesture handler example, but except that we are using a flat list, so potentially it's more performant for large list, but also we are getting a lot of things for free from the scroll view. You know, we don't have to do the decay, we get it for free. And decay, momentum with velocity. Uh, potentially, if you want to use a snap to interval. So uh, this would be quite some work to do with uh, React Native Gesture Handler. We get all these, all the things that the scroll view has to offer for free. So now, now we have something we can work with. And uh, we're going to translate back, actually. So we're going to add. So now it's not moving. So we're going to add some value so it can it actually moves as it should but we're going to block it on one side like in the previous uh, video so animated.add and so we're going to interpolate the y value so input range at zero we have zero and if the value is index times card height. We want to translate up. So we do minus uh, input range. So, but then you might be asking why are we, so this is back to the default behavior. So why did we do all these complicated things to get exactly the same behavior? But before that, 
uh, here we it doesn't show I zero times so we have zero zero so I think maybe if I add zero zero small value okay so now that looks good and so now what we can do is to clamp so extrapolate right and we can clamp the value on the right side and so now you see you have this fun behavior so card height i need card height plus margin so i'm gonna call this one but already i mean fun i don't know fun animation so default card height and so this would be card height default card height and now they should hopefully overlay perfectly on top of each other fun so now we need to calculate now we so we are really where we were in the previous video so we we are gonna do the same things so we're gonna calculate the position variable and position is so the position of the card relative to the to the screen is um, index of the card times card height. But we have the translation which we need to add. So we actually subtract it, right? Because if the y is 100 pixel, we know that the tra y translation is minus 100 pixel. So we're going to do subtract of index times card height by y and that should give us the position and so we're going to be able to calculate um, our uh, points of uh, interpolation so we have is disappearing it's minus card height is on top here we are at zero relative to the container is top zero is bottom we have con height is the uh, height of the container minus card height and is appearing is gonna be height of the container perfect so let's create the scale so scale is we interpolate from position so position interpolate input range so and this not this is not minus card height should be card height so then it's no no so is appearing height now that's correct yeah so here we have is disappearing is top is bottom is appearing and the output range is 051105 and we clamp let's have a look oh no i got it wrong 200 0, 500 Yeah, no, so it was minus card height. Sorry about that. Yeah, the position. No, yeah, that makes sense. So I probably need to reload this guy here. Okay. That looks good. That looks good. Uh, let's do the same for opacity. And here we're going to remove the clamping oops yeah perfect and now the last translation we can add that you see here it's a bit too far apart from the and so what we did in the previous example is that we added a quarter of the um, the card height so we can add it here. And um, so we interpolate on position. So 
So input range is uh, is bottom is appearing. Output range output range is at is bottom is zero, and if not, it's minus card height divided by four. So we need to translate by card R divided by two, but the card of the size is the size of the card is divided by two because of the zero five. And we add extrapolate clamp. So here I'm just copying uh, the code we wrote last time, but using vanilla animated. I think it should be here. Up. Yeah, yeah, that looks good, much better. So I hope you guys uh, like this example. I'm pretty excited about this technique because that's uh, an improvement on the old technique I was using with the transparent square view, which was good for demos, but really uh, not practical. And um, you really get a lot of for free using the square view or the flat list. So if you can use them for your gestures and animations, I think uh, you should really do it. Before wishing you a happy hacking, if you are interested to learn the fundamentals of gestures and animations in React Native, I hope that you will check out my online course at startreactnative.dev. My goal with this course is to provide you with all the tools and knowledge necessary in order to build incredible user experiences in React Native that will run at 60 FPS even on low-end devices. Guys, if everything goes to plan, I have a very important video coming up this week. So I am really looking forward to talk to you soon. And in the meantime, happy hacking.